Good morning, everybody. How do you fancy a morning of blue sky photography? You don't? In that case, looks like we're both out of luck. I was chatting to my mate Jeff recently and he was explaining that where he lives in California, sometimes they don't see a cloud for months. And I was thinking to myself, well, how bad can that actually be? And this spring, we've had a little bit of a taste of that ourselves. But you'll get no complaints from me. Six, seven weeks stuck in the office will do that to a man. So I'm still glad I can get out and looking forward to a morning's photography. So what are we up to today? So this morning I've come to the edge of the Swindale Valley, which is just north of where I was filming earlier in the week. And my plan is to head along the top of the ridgeline here in an area that's called the Harper Hills. And I've never been here before, so I don't know what I'm going to get. And so I'm going to be shooting handheld with the M50 and just seeing if I can find some compositions as I go. I haven't had to come very far, maybe as little as a quarter of a mile. And I've been taking my time, I've been exploring the area, looking for different compositions. And already I've come across this beautiful patch of cotton grass. And I love this scene across the cotton grass to the hills in the distance. And the hills are layered and they recede as they go away from you. And I love this very, very simple shot. Um, for me, unusually, no real strong subject. Really, you've just got the cotton grass in the foreground and the hills in the background. But I quite like its simplicity. Now, when I've been shooting the cotton grass before, people have asked, why haven't I gone, got low and tried to include some right in the foreground, very close to the camera? And the reason for that is because what attracts me to the cotton grass is the patterns, this dotty pattern. Uh, that you get. I'm not so interested in individual seed heads and so that's why I shoot uh, quite high head height uh, at a relatively long focal length here so I'm at about 24 mil on the crop sensor which would be a 35 mil equivalent of somewhere in the region of about 38 mil I think and uh, yeah lovely lovely little simple shot and you know, I really like it. It is already quarter past six, so we are an hour and a half after sunrise. And as the sun gets higher, it's starting to get harsher and harsher. And what that means is that the scene gets more and more contrast in it as the sun gets higher and the light gets stronger. And for me, the scene therefore loses some of the subtle tones that makes colour photography so appealing. Um, but the contrast um, is really good for black and white photography. It's really good for picking out texture and shape. And so at some point this morning, inevitably, I will turn from looking at colour images to looking for black and white images. Now, a colour composition doesn't necessarily work in black and white. Um, you may end up with a scene that has lots of colour contrast but they are the, the tones are of similar luminance. And so what you end up with is just a, a great mess of mid-tones. Uh, so what I will be looking for when I do eventually turn to black and white is some contrast between light areas and dark areas. As I say, emphasize shape and texture. In the last video I talked about the pressure that we photographers put ourselves under when we make the effort to get up early and get out. But this morning I feel that I've probably got a couple of decent shots and so that pressure isn't there anymore. And so I've just been enjoying a nice walk, taking a few shots as I go along and I've come to, to this scene here, a beautiful scene looking out towards the far eastern fells and we've got the high street range in the distance. And I think this is one of, this is an example of one of the scenes that I was talking about earlier where we haven't got uh, a lot of contrast in it. It's a lot of kind of mid-tones. And 
I don't think there's a shot here. I don't think there's a shot here in colour, and I don't think there's a shot here in black and white. There just isn't enough contrast in the scene, be it colour contrast or be it uh, luminosity contrast. And so I'm just going to stand here and really just take in the scene and just enjoy myself and just take a break from a walk for, for a couple of minutes and uh, yeah, just, just take in that lovely view. I did just think I would just take a quick shot of that view. Um, actually, perhaps the contrast isn't the problem. I think for me, the big problem is the wall. Um, so I want the eye to go to the point, to the peak in the distance. That's where I want the eye to travel. But the wall is a very, very strong line and it leads the eye, if perhaps not necessarily out of the frame, it takes it towards the edge. And so I think probably that's why this doesn't work for me as a photograph. From there I continued west, stopping now and then to take in the views that have been providing the backdrop to my morning. I followed the wall as far as I could until glimpses of the Horsewater Reservoir told me that I'd gone far enough. Not wanting to retrace my steps, I headed up into the hills to see what I could find before heading back east to where I'd started from. Wow, what a morning of photography I have had. That has to be the best hour and a half photography I've had all year, I should think. I mean, I've absolutely loved every single minute of it. What a place, I mean, what a landscape. You know, for once, I've got the timing almost perfect. There is so much contrast in the landscape with these beautiful grasses that have gone this lovely yellow silvery color and the cotton grasses as well. It's almost as if they show off every single little undulation in the landscape. And I think I've got some really nice shots, some shots I'm really pleased with. And they're very simple shots, unlike a lot of my work, which normally has a very strong focal point in it, a very strong subject. You know, these are quite open, quite empty images. And I love their simplicity and the contrast that, that there is in the landscape, absolutely brilliant. Oh, I've just had such a good morning. You know, I've been thinking all morning, and some of you are going to hate me for this, but I've been thinking, you know, I've really got to get some form of workshop or something here this time next year so that some of you can come and photograph this for yourself, because I think you would absolutely love it, particularly if you're into your black and white landscapes. I think you would absolutely love it here. You would have a fantastic time. I'm about halfway from where I started to where I turned round, so I'm gonna now gonna carry on heading back and I'll, I'll keep my camera ready and I'll take some photos if I see anything that really catches my eye. But often when I've had a morning like this, I, I tend not to take too many shots uh, on the way back, to, on the way back because, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm spent. Um, but when I, what I'll do is when we get back, I'll, I'll have a look at the back of the camera and I'm gonna try and pick uh, an image of the day and I'll try and talk you through why specifically I like that image so much. So here I am, right back where I started from. What a day, what a fantastic day's photography I have had. Probably the best morning's photography I've had since I went full time, it's been that good. And we've had blue skies all day. You know, absolutely incredible when you think about it. Right, shot of the day, probably this one. For all the cotton grass I've been photographing today, I've gone back to my old favorite subject and that's water. I really like this shot with this pool and you've got the, high, the mountain of High Street in the background, you've got some reeds in the water, a little bit of cotton grass around the edge. I think that's a really lovely shot. I think it works really, really well in black and white. So I'm really, really 
uh, happy with that one. Might be wrong, because I do find curating my images on the back of my camera while I'm in the field quite difficult. So, you know, I'll have to see when I get home, but, you know, looking at it now, and at the, mo at the time, I think that's the most important thing at the time, I just thought, yeah, you know, that's a, that's a good shot. If you've enjoyed this video, then I've got some good news for you. Uh, I've been doing two videos a week since the beginning of 2020 and I've, for a while I've wanted to split my channel in half and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, hopefully um, I'm going to start doing more videos back in the more traditional way that I used to do them. So going out into the Lake District, working around the edges of the lakes, shooting with a big tripod, um, big DSLR filters, the works in the way that I always used to in the past. And I'll do those videos on a Tuesday. On a Friday, I want to spend a bit more time doing this sort of thing, hiking up in the hills and the fells and photographing what I come across using a small uh, mirrorless camera shooting handheld. And so that's what I'm hoping for. And so fingers crossed, I'll see you next Tuesday and I'll be back in the Lake District and I'll be back out with my DSLR.